Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Creatures of the Edge. Got update number three for you on light and variable. Productive few days. Plenty of new stuff in here to show you. I've got uh, some new keys parts. Uh, I've got some conga drums in there. Uh, I think that's what you would call them. Thanks to my father-in-law who let me raid his, uh, what used to be his music room and is kind of now all stashed in the garage. Got a Gibson SG back here, which is awesome. I'm gonna get that thing set up along with the bullet. And uh, I've got some congas, bongo drum downstairs, two giant amplifiers right here. Uh, so I can experiment with maybe some live guitars where I'm micing a cab up from time to time instead of doing all just digital amp work. Yeah, so stoked on that. I think you'll hear the new, yeah, the new bass line, the new keys, and the new congas, and overheads. I knew I was forgetting something. I added some overheads uh, to the beginning of the song. And we won't spend much time on that because not a ton has changed, but I will show you a little bit because I guess you'll be owed an explanation for why the bass line changed a little. And that has to do with what I came up with for what right now says verse two, uh, or just verse, but it's the second one. I've been wanting to kind of find a section or even a whole song. The vibe is kind of sustained a little bit longer. And so I came up with kind of like a looped bass guitar part here that was just like a cool jam, you know, something that you could picture being on stage and the bass player, it doesn't matter that he's not showing off all over the fretboard, but just holding that jam and keeping steady with the drums while people boogie. And so then I thought what could be pretty cool is if this song is basically three different jams that kind of meet back up to the same pre-chorus and then kind of hook. So, and it's not even really a hook because I don't really think it's the part of the song that's gonna hook you. I think it's gonna be these little in-betweens, but you know, when it comes to these standard structures, they're all kind of irrelevant anyways, cause I don't have like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, lyric type stuff. It's just parts, parts and patterns. So let's uh, we'll just listen all the way through because you'll be familiar with the first half and I'll tell you to listen for the overheads. Baseline will ch have changed just a little and really just to match that jammy vibe, the first 16 bars were a little busy because it, that was just the direction that I had gone. So now I've saved that part, just have it on a hidden track right here um, in case I wanna go back. But now what I did was took kind of the, the best section that could be looped and just doubled it up a few times. And so that bass line is just gonna run on its own for a bit. And then we'll hit this little break and then a new bass line with the guitars kind of taking over as the lead instead of the organ. And then by the third verse, we just have to decide what we want to really be the, the, the front of the show, like the, the lead instrument, what are the supporting instruments. And I have a, a separate bass line that's just slightly variated from the first two. And then as we go into the chorus the last time, I think we'll maybe do it twice. I was thinking about doing once, twice, four times. Right now I just have it once and once, but but maybe on the last two, as you run through that the last time, you bring back in the, the kind of drum and bass style beat uh, to, to kind of keep things along and show that the chorus doesn't have to necessarily be so uh, such a jarring departure from the smoothness. It could have also flowed with the song. So yeah, for now, that's what I was thinking. Let's check it out, though. I'll quit rambling, starting from the top.
still adjusting some levels. I've been writing a lot of this stuff in the past two hours. So let's take a look uh, with the magnifying glass at a few of these new parts. So here's what I mean with the bass. Solo this up. Here's the first one. Okay, there's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. So those are pretty cool and open up a lot of opportunity to layer other instruments over the top, but I'm really doing my very best to not get too crazy on the drums through there uh, and thinking that I need to prove that I can uh, <laughs> variate the patterns to you because uh, that's definitely how my brain works. Like I need to, I can't just have the, the hi-hats riding on eighth notes because people will think that I'm just lame at this. Uh, so it has to, you know, you got to start hitting some weird, weird patterns in between that are 16th and 32nd notes. We're just letting it ride for right now. These new keys that are pretty cool, very vibey. Show you this part individually. So yeah, uh, a lot of interesting parts and textures. Really excited to keep going on it. And uh, definitely think that uh, it, it might be cool to vary up the line on the hand drums as the bass line changes, so does that. Kind of have a, that looped effect, but you know, these are all live live instruments and I, I really performed everything at full, nearly full speed, at least, uh, except for maybe like there's a little arpeggiated sweet pick that I just uh, don't don't have it anymore uh, towards the end. So I kind of played it slow and then just edited it to fit um, just by cutting the tails off and moving transients uh, into the proper alignment. So that's something that you can do. And you know what? I found that the um, if you blend the, the fades right between each note change, you'll really retain the nuances of the picking patterns and it, it sounds pretty darn natural. You just got to kind of be wary of making it too, too on the money. You know, that it, it definitely don't, don't line up perfectly to the grid on that type of stuff. Just kind of learn that there's instances when it starts to sound robotic, but there's a lot of times where, especially it feels like with my music, that things are so busy that I don't have a choice. Like if something's off time, it kind of throws everything off unless that's like specifically engineered um, I guess it would be like some sort of shuffle pattern. I guess, I guess one side um, kind of bumps you forward in time for certain things, but I'll do that occasionally on the drums. Um, or if there's a guitar bend that sounds better when you when it comes in a little late, you know, I'm 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 mindful of those things. But in general, I found that there's really not too much harm in maybe recording just a tad slower and then editing it to fit because you get really clean transitions. Uh, and I'm a sloppy guitar player uh, in this day and age. So uh, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue to follow along on the creation of Light and Variable and many other songs to come. Check out my other three tracks on whichever streaming service you prefer to use. It is probably up there. And that's going to do it. We'll see you back soon in a week or so, guys. Take care till then. Appreciate you hanging out.